designs and I just thought I'd do a brief little trunk show of about 18 of my quilts that feature the Let's Strip It method. We're doing it in the garden because it's spring, it's wonderful, we got two days before Easter and I want to show off our roses a little bit. Some of you have seen those, I post them every day to our website and to Instagram, but our roses are just beautiful right now and the garden is really fun to be in. We're going to start with the first quilt I ever did. I've been quilting for about 15 years now. When I first started, I discovered this less strip it method of making a quilt. And this is the first one I did. It's called Majestic Mountain. And it was only named that because I was in the mountains when I did it. But it was really fun to do, had a great time with it, and didn't think too much about it at the time. I wrote a free pattern that I gave away and found that it was really, really popular. Jenny Dome discovered this technique and decided to do a tutorial based on my pattern here using a different strip set. And hers, like this and it's called the amazing jelly roll quilt this is one jelly roll an eighth of a yard for my inner border a half yard for the outside border and a half yard for the binding so it makes this beautiful 62 by 62 quilt with just one jelly roll people ask how far can a jelly roll go well this is about how far it can go and we all have one we have a jelly roll or a ballet pop in our stash that we don't know what to do with this is a great way to use them works really really well now this pattern I was working with this one and doing it, and I found that what could I do to make it a little different? This is the same pattern, but turned on point. And you'll notice that my border in this pattern does not go all the way around. Borders do not have to go all the way around. What they have to do is accent your quilt and draw your eye to the center. So I used a little bit of leftovers in the upper right and the bottom left hand corner to create this interesting border. While I was doing this, I decided I would do the original design again using different fabrics. And taking my Majestic Mountain pattern, I used a jelly roll that was a very wide variety of colors. And when I was putting it together, they said, oh, we don't want to look like that. We're different. We want to look like this. This one wound up looking like a stained glass window. It's called Striped Surprise. And I really had fun doing this. And I let the fabric talk to me on how it was going to be laid out and what it was going to do. In doing this one, Rob Appel of the Man Sewer saw it and fell in love with the pattern also, called me up and asked me if he could do a version of this and teach it in classes, which I was proud to have him do. So Jenny Doan did a tutorial on her page and so did Rob Appel based on this technique. Rob's using the same pattern, turned it out a little bit more like this. This is the same pattern, the same blocks, just laid out differently. And in this case, you'll notice that I use the leftovers in the borders. I don't like to waste any fabric, so I have some strip sets left over. I cut them up and make a border out. It works really, really well. I decided I wanted to do something a little bit different than both of these, and I wanted a little more of a modern quilt. Modern quilts give you a lot of extra space so that you can show off the quilting. And this is my homage to the modern quilt movement. And it's called Modern Striped Squares, but it wound up being nicknamed my Zen Garden because you'll see the beautiful raked rock with the greens for the plants and the trees and the rocks that are in it. Found this really fun. And again, I use my leftovers in the border. The border doesn't have to be equal and go all the way around. It seems like it just has to accent the quilt. And that's certainly what this one did. When we owned our store, we had to design a quilt unique that hadn't been published before for a quilt sampler magazine. And in doing that, I designed this one and it's called Sedona Sunrise. And it's only called Sedona Sunrise because of the colors. I just absolutely thought this looked like the red rocks of Sedona and the morning sunrise or sunset, which can be absolutely beautiful in Arizona. If you get a chance, be sure to get up there and see it. I did this one, and they wanted two versions of it, one that they could publish in the magazine, and they thought this was a little too bright and bold and didn't really look like the Southwest. Well, I do think this is the Southwest, but the one they chose in the colorway is this one. So this is the same thing. This is a Sedona Sunrise done in only five colors instead of 20 colors and gives you much more of a Southwest color blend feel. In doing that, I found that a lot of people were doing jelly rolls in the jelly roll race at the time. And I thought, this is a great little quilt, but what can I do to make it a little more interesting? So this is my answer to the amazing jelly roll race. And this again is, oops, let's get this out of the way here a little bit. This is one 
jelly roll. In this case, a belly pop. By way of disclaimer, a belly pop is a registered trademark trade name by Hoffman for two and a half strips of batik fabric. And a jelly roll is a registered trademark trade name by Moda for two and a half strips of print fabric. This is one belly pop by Hoffman, a little bit of extra for the border, put together in one day, works really easy, not quite as fast as a jelly roll race, but great fun and a little different. So it's a great way to use your jelly rolls or belly pops that you have at home, or your scraps. Two and a half inch strips, strips are something that I save, which I think are really fun to work with. You just collect them and see what happens. This quilt I made only because I fell in love with this backing. This orange and blue just, just really spoke to me. So I found a blue Bally Pop. No, this is, yes, Bally Pop by Benertex. And it had 20 different colors. This is called Striped Squares on Point. And you'll see the secondary design with the little blocks that are in it, which are really cute. Fun and easy, all using the same technique. I wanted to do a bigger quilt, something that really spoke to me in the brighter colors. And this one is the Kama Jelly Roll from, oh, about eight, nine years ago from Moda. And I just love the way the design came out. And again, I'm letting the fabric talk to me. I create the blocks or the units and then put them together the way the fabric speaks. I found this one really fun. It's called Van Got It. And only because walking by it when it's done, I thought it looked a little bit like a Van Gogh painting. Why, I don't know, but that's what it's called. But really fun. This one was an interesting story because in making this one, I had made all of the blocks and they were saying to me, oh, we don't play well together. We don't look good together. This is not nice. So uh, from the design wall. So I sashed every single one of them to separate them and give them some character. And I wanted this great stained glass look and just fell in love with the quilt. So this is again, one ballet pop and about two and a half yards of black fabric. You'll see the borders have my uh, leftovers in it again. I try to use every bit of the fabric. It makes it really fun to do, and this is a really easy quilt and great fun. Trying a little other, another variation. This one is called Malibu Beach, and it's only named that because of the colors. This just struck me as the beach, the sand and the seaweed and the ocean, so I named it Malibu Beach and had great fun with it. There are 20 colors in this quilt. It again started as a jelly roll or as a ballet pop, because most of it is boutiques and my sashings and bindings just to create this wonderful quilt. I had done this and people were asking me for quilts that they could do in the colors of the bride, for example, or something that was really special. So taking this quilt and doing Malibu Beach in only five colors instead of 20 colors, you wind up with a quilt that looks like this. So this is Malibu Beach again, done in only 20 colors. Many people have used this when I have the store when they wanted a quilt for a wedding. There's a plenty of room that have signatures in it and it can be done at the bridegroom's colors, which is really fun. Again, Malibu Beach in five colors. Customers were saying to me, well, you do a lot with the jelly rolls. What about the fat quarters? What can we do with the fat quarter? So using the same technique with a little variation, this quilt is called Fat Quarter Shuffle and I use fat quarters. The pattern shows you how to use all of your leftover pieces so there's nothing wasted. All of these are pre-sewn together in different sections and pieces when you make your block or your unit in the center, and it shows you in the pattern how to use those and create this interesting border. So fat quarter shuffle in black and white and red, which is always good. Black and white with any spice of color can be a really fun quilt. I did the same thing again though too in some leftover fat quarters I did just to see how it would look in different colors. I wound up with this really fun all kind of fall Halloween-y colored quilt. And again, it's a different layout. Same block, same unit, but laid out differently. And board is created slightly different, but no waste in it. <clears throat> Makes it really fun to make them because you have the fabric to talk to you and decide what it's going to do and how it's going to lay out. I use my design wall extensively. When you're doing these, both of them are based on strip sets. And this is a fun one that uses a different size strip set. It's not two and a half inch strips and it looks really, really difficult to make because of the narrowness of the strips. But there's a trick to this one. This is a striped fabric. So I didn't have to make strip sets. The striped fabric is already striped. It already looks like this. 
and it's a great way to use pre-printed fabric that's in stripes, borders, sashings, and uh, border prints do really well with that. This is one of those using the fabric that's already pre-printed. And this one also, in a Christmas theme, is a pre-printed fabric that goes together super easy. These are making an afternoon quilts when you need something really quick or need something for a charity event, or just because you want to have fun with the quilts and not get too serious about it. The last quilt I'm going to show you today is the one we did when I taught on a cruise to the Caribbean. This one is called V Victory at Sea. Uses the same technique with some alterations in the pattern. Done in blacks, whites, and reds. And again, very different in that there's some secondary patterns and stuff going on, different than the other ones that I've done. But again, we're using all of my leftovers in the border. Creates this wonderful look. Uh, this one was really well received and everybody enjoyed making it on our cruise to the Caribbean, which is mm, several years ago now. Anyway, that's my quick 18 quilt trunk show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. My patterns are all available on our website at uh, 3dudesquilting.com. No, 3dudesquiltingdesigns.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs>